Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Update for Sunday, July 27, 2025. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. And Jeff, what we like to see, no tropical cyclone activity expected during the next seven days. The Atlantic quiet right now, but we are just a week away from the month of August when we get into our busy season. We see a couple of waves coming off the African coast few things that we see different while the numbers are higher in August is one we see the dry Saharan layer reduce a little bit and also the amount of wind shear too in the southern Atlantic Basin or the main development region we if we look at the statistics for the month of August you can see the climatological statistics there in the red area over 70 storms developed in that red area or the main development region the orange area 50 to 69 storms and then the green area 38 to 49 storms and then out outside of that in the blue shaded areas 10 to 29 so it does get more active in august main development region we knew that but last year that wasn't so much the story we got a late start although we don't want to focus too much on what happened last year still want to stay in touch with a trusted source and pay attention to what's going on in the tropics at least every other day or so during the month of August and September. Yeah, so you can kind of see here looking at the infrared of the Atlantic, um, kind of convectively anemic. And, and what I mean by that, you just don't see a lot of, of thunderstorm activity. These are thunderstorm activity here in the, in the brighter colors. And you can see for a large portion of the Atlantic, we have kind of some dry sinking air. I'll show that in a minute. Uh, tropical wave here interacting with uh, an upper level low and some shear is producing some showers and thunderstorms of the Caribbean. But this is, you can see the, the tops of these storms are being blown off to the east. So there's obviously some westerly wind shear here. Tropical wave actually moving inland here in the western Gulf. Mm -hmm. uh, which is helping to enhance a little bit of our sea breeze here locally today. And then we do have this big tropical wave about to emerge off the coast of Africa. And, and this is what some of the ensemble models have been showing a little bit of potential down the road. And we'll take a look at that. But you can see here with the what we call the uh, Saharan air layer. So this is that dusty, dry, sinking air that comes off the Saharan desert of northern Africa and spreads westward across the Atlantic Ocean and sometimes even over here into the Gulf of Mexico and you can see here all this kind of dry sinking air and we have these uh, little tropical waves here kind of on the south side of, of this air coming off of uh, northern Africa and so kind of an unfavorable look still here to the Atlantic again this is this is why you don't have a lot of showers and thunderstorms in this region uh, currently because it's, it's a very stable air mass we have and you can see the tropical waves down here around 10 north they're a little bit south of that layer, but as they try to pull off of 10 degrees north and gain a little bit of uh, latitude, uh, they start to ingest some of this dry air and so they kind of choke off and, and, and aren't able to get going. Additionally, we still have some pretty decent wind shear, especially through the Caribbean, kind of showed you that on the satellite there, so westerly wind shear. Uh, we're talking anywhere 40, 45 knots here across the southern and western Caribbean. Uh, so not not favorable at all in the Caribbean right now. Some decently favorable conditions if something were to actually uh, have some showers, thunderstorms kind of persist and kind of attempt to develop. The upper level winds here in the Atlantic uh, between the eastern Caribbean and, and the coast of Africa are not horrible here. You can see the winds here anywhere from 10, maybe around 20 knots or so here around 40 west. But you can see this, This we're going to start to look at this maybe every week and we'll see as, if these values start to decrease and there's only certain pockets in the Atlantic that become um, uh, unfavorable or remain unfavorable. So we'll see. And so this is the European guidance. This is the ensembles from the European uh, or the, uh, sorry, this is the deterministic European that, that goes out that shows the probability of a tropical depression forming. And this was for Friday, August the 1st. And so that big wave that's currently about to exit the coast of Africa, this is what this particular model is showing for development chances as it gets out here to the Central Atlantic. And you can see here, you know, it's, it's kind of highlighting some fairly high chances. One thing I will say is the European this year has been sort of overestimating some of these development chances. You remember last week in the Gulf of Mexico, it had 30, 40 percent development chances off the coast of Louisiana, and we never really saw a whole lot get going with that system. 
Um, you know, hurricane soon kept around 10%. So this could be another case here, especially since we're not seeing a lot from the GFS or the Canadian in this region, that the European could be once again overestimating some of this development potential here in the Atlantic. And again, I don't know if by next Friday things are going to get a whole lot more favorable here. So this this may be a little bit overdone, um, but you kind of get the gist of this moving, uh, kind of where this is going to go, kind of moving off to the west, northwest. And you can see those development chances actually go down as it gets further to the west, indicating uh, conditions become increasingly unfavorable as it approaches maybe the Caribbean uh, around next weekend, around this time a week from now. So we'll see. I think it's still a week or so early for the Atlantic. We're just not quite there yet with some of these unfavorable factors. But as we start to get these more robust waves coming off and some of this dry air out there begins to mix out, shear comes down a little bit more. Um, I think we'll start to see more potential for development. The other thing we'll have to watch again next week is is uh, just like we saw the last two weeks, yep. uh, we, we could have some energy here off the Carolinas that, that may try to back down uh, again into the northern Gulf. So I think our pattern here locally repeats again where we dry out, we get hot mid early midweek, and then again this kind of plume of, of tropical moisture comes in from the east with another disturbance as we get into Friday and Saturday of next week. I don't think we're going to see a lot of development with it. Um, you can see the probabilities here just this aren't high like we saw with the with the previous couple systems in the Gulf, but um, kind of continues our wetter-ish than normal pattern here that we've gotten into this summer uh, in Southeast Texas, which has helped kind of keep the heat down, uh, kept and keep and kind of kept our yards a little greener than than maybe a couple years in the past, but. We're starting to get to that time of year, as you mentioned, August, where things will begin to change. The question is, is it going to be in the next week or two, or do we have to wait more towards the later part of August for things to get more favorable? And right now, it could be either way. So we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on things as we go through the next few weeks. Yeah, I think people are wel welcoming those systems in the northern Gulf primarily because of the cloud cover and keeping temperatures in the low 90s and those heat indices down a little bit. But yeah, like you said, we're in the hot box skin in Southeast Texas for the first part of the week. Then we'll see how much moisture or how much development comes from that system as it tracks once again across the Northern Gulf in a westerly direction. Keep it right here on the Weather Insights YouTube channel for the latest on the tropics. We'll have our weekly weather or tropics briefings and more frequent if we have anything threatening the, the area. Also join Weather Insights. All, we're on all the social media uh, platforms and now on Substack too, where you'll get your daily weather forecasts. And then also our Weather Insights website. You can read Jeff's blogs there as well. Jeff, thank you very much. Until next time, have a good one, sir.